So hello guys. Is that are we live? <laughs> okay, so there's some lag, but um yeah. So the um now 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 everything's in frame and stuff. So all of the biological materials for our um um Hold on, it's been a long classroom day. Let me just, not teaching anymore. Just, um, let's see, hold on. My computer's freaking out a little bit. Let's turn this off, let's, let's continue. Hi everyone, hope you're having a great day. Although all of the crazy weather events everywhere in the world are just nuts. I can't even believe all the flooding and hurricanes and wildfires and storms and all that. So hopefully wherever you are, you're safe. Um, we had a massive heat wave in Northern California um, and it got to like 80 degrees in my classroom this Friday. It was insane. My poor kids were like wilting because we don't have air conditioning. So uh, yeah, and then this tank got really hot it got to be like 78 degrees, the tank itself. And then a lot of my Elodia that I originally put into the tank actually died. But um, let's hear it. Let's take a look. Yeah, teaching's been going really well, Amanda Jean. Thank you. Yeah, it's been going awesome. Oh, hold on. Let me turn this off. Okay. So here is the tank. You can see things are starting to grow. So the little red tiger lotus is going. Um, the plants just look really great. I'm really surprised by how little algae there is in this tank. So I'm really looking excited. Er, hey, Yoop! Hi! How are you doing, Yoop? Oh my goodness. Oh, thank you, Giuseppe. Yeah, this tank turned out really nice and the kids are super excited about it. Um, a lot of kids will come back and check it out all the time. They ask a lot of questions about it. Um, Thank you, Sugar Glider. It looks good. Um, <clears throat> live bearing? Um, I'm not sure what you mean. I do want to put in some live bearing animals in here, some goodyids. Vals, you haven't really missed anything, just me kind of reorienting and coming back to YouTube and introducing everything. But um, yeah, I hope so, glass boxes. I hope so. I'm really excited. And Let's see, so this tank looks really great and it's been doing exactly what I want, you know, getting the kids interested in it, get a lot of questions about it. Um, what's exciting is we just got a huge shipment of live organisms for all of the um, biology teachers. So that's what I have floating in here now. You can see that the school district, the San Francisco Unified School District is putting in a ton of money into the biology department right now. And we got a bunch of snails. So this is awesome. What grade do I teach? I teach ninth grade biology and upper level marine biology. But we got some snails. They're labeled as pond snails. Um, but I took a look in here. There's a mix of ram's horn snails and um, a few a few pond snails but you can see most of them are ram's horn snails there's even one red ram's horn snail in there which is awesome this bag got a little deflated so funny thing like the bag of live organisms got here and then we didn't get an email about it so thank goodness we were looking for them because uh, they arrived and we didn't know that they were downstairs um, anyway here's the big bag of Elodia so I really hope this Elodia is okay because for some reason it got shipped from Sacramento during a heat wave. So um, it, uh, <laughs> Wolfie, oh, that's so sweet. That'd be awesome. Um, I wish I could be your teacher, that'd be cool. But anyway, this stuff got shipped in a heat wave. So I'm really hoping that it made it. There, was, there were several cold packs in the bag. Um, so hopefully they weren't negatively impacted. And then we also got a bunch of night crawlers. So here, let's open these up. Ooh. We're gonna be using these to look at cycling of organic matter. So we're gonna be setting up different worm habitats 
So um, with, you know, varying organic material in each one, two of the habitats will have worms, two won't, and then we're going to see what role the worms play in um, decomposition and cycling of organic material. So I got to get these worms put away, got to get the anacris or the elodea rather, um, all set up in here. Um, I think these guys are just about done acclimating. I'm not sure what to do with these guys. I think I kind of want to rinse them under tap water first, um, just in case. There's a, <clears throat> our local plant expert in San Francisco Aquarium Society, he always recommends putting any new plants that you get in tap water for a couple of minutes in order to kill anything that could be nasty and infect your aquarium, like hydra and things like that. So I think I'm going to just rinse these off in water before I put them in the tank. So, oh, Angela, thank you. I, I try, so we'll see. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Giuseppe, that'd be awesome. It's, it's amazing. Here, let me look at the other one. Oh, we have plants growing. So the first week of school, I had the kids plant their own seed either a radish or a pea and then we've been doing observations on them every day so you can see some of them are quite large and I think I'm gonna get a big like tr a trough type deal and we'll transplant some of the biggest ones and let them grow out I think it'd be cool if we had peas growing in the class it'd be neat if we could even harvest them but some of these are getting quite large like this radish is uh, gonna be a sizable radish so some of the kids want to take them home and keep them too. We got our carnivorous plant corner over here. Yoop, you are up late, go to bed. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by, Yoop. Um, so we got my carnivorous plant corner over here. The, um, the largest pitcher actually like dried up during the heat wave, but we got a bunch of other pitchers growing in. So this is a brand new pitcher that started growing after I moved them, so that's good. Um, so we got my plant corner, and then what the kids really love are these guys, the uh, shrimp that I have in here. This tank's been doing awesome since I moved it. You can see there's been a lot of growth of this guppy grass, and I have some kids every day check out the shrimp, and you can see they're in there with the snails, um, eating some pellets, I've had several kids like want to learn how to feed them and take care of them and we've had some really good conversations about um, fish tanks and living organisms in general. So I hope these shrimps have babies soon. That would be cool. One of them had eggs a little while back but I'm not sure if she carried full term. Actually I think that one might be pregnant. It's hard for me to tell. That one in the middle or top right there. Anyway yeah this is the classroom so far. It's, uh, you know, it's <clears throat> filling in, getting nice and messy. But anyway, I'm just going to add these things to the tank, and then I should probably do some grading. So let, I'm not sure how to set this up the best so y'all can see it. Maybe something like that. Hello, Ruru2. The students' favorite plants, they definitely love the carnivorous plants. Those are their favorite. <laughs> and you can get a lot of good um, conversations with carnivorous plants, too. So, okay, let's figure this out. Let's roll up my shoulders. The science room, yeah, this is the science room. I'm just going to roll up my sleeves. And we're just going to add these to the tank. It's a thousand degrees. So, actually, this last weekend was um, my boyfriend and I's two-year anniversary, so that was fun. And we actually went up to Eureka, um, Humboldt Eureka area. I'm gonna take this out. So we were able to escape the heat route too. We got, it was like 90 in Eureka, which is insanely hot for Northern California. Um, but we managed to escape like the 100 degree heat. So here is the, let's see, 
the snails, poor snails coming in during the heat wave, but I think they made it. <laughs> Mellow Moogle, nice to have you here. Release beneath the... No, 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 two years, Angela, two years, sorry. So I'm gonna do the um, drop, the plop and drop technique. So I'm just going to, I don't know if I can angle this any better so you can see it, but I'm just gonna take the snails and try and get them off the walls and put them in here. So let's see, pop, 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 let's go. Come on snails, time to go. So, okay, four snails. I'm just gonna do a quick check. All right, none of them look terrible. They all look like ram's horns. So I'm just gonna pop them in. <laughs> oh, it's good to see snails in here. And one pond snail, looks like one pond snail in that bag. Two is still really good, yeah. Yeah, awful apprentice, it's hard to teach science. It's, there's a lot of skills that go into it. And um, I think, you know, a lot of science teachers are going in wanting to teach science, which is the ultimate goal. But you also have to teach, like, language. You have to teach communication. You have to teach a lot of other things, too, um, in order to be good at teaching science. And I think that's something that a lot of people, you know, I wasn't, not saying I wasn't prepared, but it was a lot more than I thought it would be. Let's just say, like I'm basically teaching English composition when I teach a lot of like lab reports and stuff. So there's a lot of support that has to go into it. So, oh no, I think this snail is dead. There's definitely nothing in this one, but we'll pull him out. I think the others look good. Okay. I actually got the um, extra bag of snails. Look at this poor bag, it got a little deflated, but I think it's still fine. Flynn, nice to see you in here. Good job surviving your first full day of school. Oops, oh, that's why it's deflated. It's like kind of weird. But yeah, first the first week, man, that is a tough, tough week of school. I think it's the hardest, actually the first week of school. There's just so much going on. You got kids coming in and out of classes, a lot of class switching, a lot of movement, all that kind of stuff. Every time, yeah. I actually showed my kids a picture of him and I for the first time today, or yesterday, and they got a real kick out of it. <laughs> Let's see, sugar glider. I have biology, my teacher told me I don't need her. I know for all the high school. Uh, that I don't need her. I know for all the high school years. Yeah, there's a huge range of kids that you get in classes too. Like again, um, you have kids that need more support and kids that are like way ahead of the curve. So, and I can only hope that, you know, there's something interesting and challenging for everyone. But let's check this out. Michael is two GNs in a human suit. Well, a lot of these snails are floating, so hopefully they will snap out of it. Do you guys know what makes snails float? Do they just like get, um, do they get air trapped in their shell during shipping? Does anyone know? Looking in the chat. Um, oh wait, hold on, E.E. E. Smith. I'm actually applying for an itinerant teaching position in Alaska. That would be awesome. Wow, ornithology and birding. That's great. So today I put a pair of garden. Okay, uh, Echo's Farm, I'll get right back to you. Trapped air bubbles, okay. So hopefully they go away, right? Because these snails are definitely alive. Will, this, will, the, will this air bubbles go away eventually? Does anyone know why? they get air bubbles under their shell. I'm just worried because so many of them are floating. You can see like almost all my snails are floating instead of properly, um, properly moving around. They will fart and sink, Aqua Apprentice, thank you. Okay, 
That's all I'm looking for. I love how this little group of Sagittarius turned out, and there's that like one Java fern leaf baby that got swept away and moved over here. But yeah, I'm really happy with how this tank is turning out. I think the light's perfect for it. Yay, snails. Okay, good. So they're moving around, now they're going. So what the kids will be doing with the snails and Elodia at one point um, is they're going to be making enclosed ecosystems. <coughs> Sorry. Enclosed ecosystems. And then um, they'll be using pretty expensive probes, actually, to measure CO2 and oxygen in the water. So they're going to actually be measuring photosynthesis at some point. Okay, looks like there's a bunch of duckweed in here, in the Elodia rather. I'm not opposed to duckweed at all, but you know, there's a lot in here. So I'm actually gonna go to the sink and rinse these off. Let's see. Oh, this is kind of cool. I'm sad I took away the cards, but basically this is a demo that my marine bio kids made. So this is all the water in the earth. This, this two liter bottle represents all the water in the earth. This represents all the salt water in the world, okay? So you can see, I had the kids like calculate the percentage proportion of this. It's like 97% or something crazy like that, salty oceans. And then this is all the fresh water in the world. So here, all the water in the world, all the salt water, all the fresh water, but most of it you can't even use. Like I, I forget because I just took away the tags. But um, yeah, basically I forget what these are. A lot of these are trapped in groundwater or um, that kind of stuff. But this one is the water that's available in the soil and air. And you can see it's, there's basically no water in here. <laughs> There's like a little bit of, con there it is, a little bit of condensation on the top. So out of all the water in the world here, this is the usable water that we have. Like, isn't that insane? Usable fresh water. It's like 0.1%. And then all the salt water in the world. And then all the fresh water that's, I think this one is trapped in the polar um, ice caps. So polar ice caps, and then we have some that's trapped like really deep in the earth, unaccessible basically. So, but yeah, that was crazy. Let's rinse this off. Oh, I was, <laughs> no, it's good. Do you want to be on a live stream? That's the least I need today. Oh, I'm setting up the tank. Like the, uh, setting up the tank with people. It's not on Facebook, it's on YouTube. It's my channel. So one of my colleagues just walked in. <laughs> there are 38 people that... <laughs> Did you put all your worms in a bucket? Um, no, I haven't put them in a bucket yet. So. You think if I put them in a bucket, they won't fight? They won't die in a bucket. Yeah, they'll be fine in a bucket. Just, there's so many of them. I worry that there's so many of them in a small... Do you area. want some soil? Like, I have, yeah, I oh, you soil. got some? Okay. As long as they can make it. Yeah, they'll be fine. They better. <laughs> they'll be fine. Stop about digging up worms. <laughs> they all die. No, they'll be fine. Bye. Okay, bye. See you tomorrow. Hello, there. So the teacher that just walked in uh, was actually my master teacher, and she teaches physiology. <laughs> so what probes do we use? We are going to be using vernier probes. Uh, we got to play with them a little bit during the professional development, and that was really cool. So, oh my, this is, this is a ton. Look at that. Oh, it's kind of grody. Okay, well, I'm glad, I'm glad was, um, my colleague, I'll say, brought me my bucket back, because this is, ooh. Okay. Yeah, a lot of my, um, fellow teachers, and I, I'm sorry, I cannot see any comments that are being posted right now because I'm away from the camera, but a lot of my fellow teachers um, are asking for advice about how to set up these freshwater tanks and stuff, which is pretty fun. 
I'd love to have a salt water tank in my room. Just, you know, marine biology. And, wow, this smells very fishy. This doesn't seem to be like super, looks kind of sparse, you know? It doesn't, like this looks like a good piece. And I'm not sure about this other stuff, but we'll see. So I'm just rinsing this off in regular tap water. Yeah, look at how stringy some of this stuff is. Yeah, we'll see. The reason we bought so far in advance of the actual experiment is so that, you know, it can grow and be healthy again. But actually, I'm, I'm, I'm considering trimming most of this because not all of this looks actively growing. And I really need the active growing tip for the students to experiment with because that's the part that's um, going to be photosynthesizing the most. It's funny, in the teacher's manual they gave us, it was like, we recommend growing your plants under grow lights. And all of us were just like, we're not going to buy grow lights. We're just going to stick them in the window. Which, I mean, I guess is all you need for Elodia. The other plants in the tank are doing well, too, in the window. So I'm, I'm happy with that. But let's rinse all this stuff off. Yeah, like this. I'm not, this is not growing anymore. Look at how stringy that is. I wonder how they grow this stuff. Like, is it in huge mats or something? Okay. I'm going to take this bucket. See if I missed any. Ah, I missed a couple. Oh, gosh, I have a whole nother bag. Okay, let's do this one, too. But, I don't know, speaking of my, um, the other teachers at my school, I'm really so happy that I got to teach, um, or I get to teach, rather, not got, I get to teach at the same place that I did my student teaching. It's been a real blessing, and, you know, it feels great. It feels like coming home and being a part of the same family, and the kids are awesome here. Doing good stuff. Okay, this bag looks a lot better. Plants in this bag appear to be more fluffy. Like, they look a lot better. Although, like, this is, I'm not sure what that is. So I'm just rinsing this all out because my tank looks nice. I don't want it to <laughs> go downhill. Look at, there's like leaves and stuff in here. I bet these were growing outside like in a big pond, but at least it doesn't smell like a pond. It smells a little fishy, but it's not terrible. I'm just rinsing this stuff out. Okay, there's a lot of duckweed in here, I gotta say. over. <clears throat> I want duckweed. Some people want duckweed. Here, let me see. Can't stand the plant to be Smith. Yeah, we like it because it grows fast. I would choose something else. I'm, I'm just checking everything really quick. Show the kids chasing, uh, chasing ice and chasing coral on Netflix. Yeah, I've heard about that stuff. I'm gonna do that. Heat damage with grow light. Yeah, that's true, Rutu. So one of the optional investigations is to provide different colored lights and then see how the rate of photosynthesis changes. And I think um, we'll definitely be doing that. Um, 
flushing the duckweed? I mean... <clears throat> I will be flushing the anacris, that's for sure. So, yeah, see, all these pieces that are super stringy, I think I'm going to put them to the side and... I'll look and see how much of it is like that because I don't want to put that in my tank. Yeah, so much of this is just really stringy. Okay, this is good. And I'll put this in. Okay. Yeah. I don't mind having <clears throat> a ton of duckweed, actually. I like duckweed. I know that's probably, um, whatchamacallit, blasphemy for some people so like here like this stuff is all actively growing and then I'm just gonna trim off this part that isn't anymore oh yeah there's a lot of duckweed there's no way I'm getting it out <laughs> that's okay see this I can break a couple pieces this will be nice the kids have been asking like when are you gonna put stuff in here and uh, now I'm putting stuff in here. I think I'm gonna um, go for goodies as well. I'm not sure if I had shared that with you guys. I live streamed a little bit ago asking like what would be best in here. And although I love white clouds and I seriously considered those and zebra danios as well, I think for the first tank, I just, I really want goodies for some reason. I don't know, it's something I've never kept before. And there'll be a lot of things for the snails to eat. That is for sure. <clears throat> yeah, this is stringy. Okay, this is good. And a lot of this is really stringy. That's okay. We'll just keep going. Just keep going, just keep going. I'm really not um, paying attention to where it goes in the tank. <laughs> I'm just kind of throwing it in. It's a floating tank, or er, floating plant. I did notice that the, the Elodia closest to the window, so the Elodia on this side of the tank, I think was getting too much sun, and um, some of that died back. Another thing that happened, of course, is the incredible heat wave we had in San Francisco, and I think a lot of my plants died a lot of my Elodia, rather, died during the heat wave um, because they were not happy at all. But this is looking good. <clears throat> Let's see. Put this in here. We need to take this out. <sighs> all right. You know, while I'm sorting this, I'm just wondering, are there any questions you guys want to ask? I'm just like sorting tons of duckweed here. Let's see. Do you have a hang on back filter that keeps pushing duckweed into the water? No, I just have a sponge filter in this tank. <clears throat> I only have a hang on back on one tank at home, the puffer fish who I am considering bringing into the classroom. I think he would be a really fun one because he's so interactive. Um, like literally I walk into the room and he's right in the front of his tank. He really likes to say hi to people. <laughs> and I think the kids would get a huge kick out of that. But then that's a whole nother thing that I have to take care of here, you know? Um, and I guess he would have to live on my desk so that I, like I really, Care about him and I don't want him to get hurt so I'm still on the fence about that one and then um, the baby skink my blue tongue skink that's going to go into the back of my classroom soon um, she still needs to grow up she's grown two centimeters already so, yeah the students would really love my puffer we have time will a gardener eye pair and a bivitatum pair ooh interesting so Echo's Farm asks, will a gardener eye pair and a bivitatum pair go together? And you know, I asked that exact same question to another killy fish, like a veteran killy, killy fish keeper, because I had that same problem. <laughs> it's 
I wanted to try keeping Vitaniatum, Vivitatum, or sorry, Vivitatum and Gardneri together. And he said that you can, you probably can, but they'll probably eat each other's offspring. So that's the trade-off. You can keep them together, but it may not be a productive tank. So that is the issue that you're gonna run into if you try and keep those two species together. Otherwise, they're about the same size and they have about the same requirements. And it's really easy to tell Vivitatum and Gardneri females apart, unlike other species of killifish. For example, I would never keep um, Vivitatum and Vitaniatum together. They're just way too similar um, to each other. And I would never keep any of the Actia simians together because they, again, look really similar to one another, especially the females that have very little coloration compared to the males. Let's see. KG Cichlid, are you using natural sunlight for the plants? Just natural sunlight. And it's been this way for about three weeks, I think. And it looks great. Um, all the plants have shown growth. Usually there's that initial pause, you know, right after you plant a tank, it doesn't seem like anything's growing, but everything in this tank is growing, um, not super fast. And that is one thing that I'm considering dosing with easy green, but I think with all of the snails that are in here now, they will produce more waste for the plants to feed on. The reason I don't want to dose easy green on this tank because I want it to be super, super low maintenance. And every time I dose with easy green, it seems like my plants grow like crazy, but then I also get a lot of algae unless I do tons of water changes. And this tank, I want it to be minimal as possible. I want to do as few water changes as possible, maybe like once every two weeks kind of deal. Do you still have your bearded dragon? Yes, Angela, I do, but he has gone into brumation. He got fooled by the cool weather we were having before the heat wave. Um, he usually goes to sleep around uh, October, November, so he is really early this year. But I don't know, every once in a while, bearded dragons just go into brumation at weird times. Um, so brumation for, um, brumation is, basically hibernation for a bearded dragon. They stop eating and they start just sleeping all day. So he's literally just been sleeping for, I guess ever since school started, he's been sleeping, which again is really early and I'm a little concerned. So I'm gonna take him and the new baby skink to my reptile vet, who's a really good vet. And he was concerned as well when I initially told him he had gone to sleep, but then he also lives in Berkeley and he didn't know that San Francisco on the ocean side was having really, really weird weather patterns. Um, it's been like insanely cool this summer and really, really foggy and dark all the time. And once I told him that, he's like, yeah, sometimes bearded dragons will react to that. <clears throat> it was like so dark at our apartment all the time before the heat wave. So that very well could have fooled him and put him into early brumation. You stick him in the fridge? No, I just, I keep everything the same. I keep the light level the same. I keep the light timer on the same. I don't reduce the temperature at all. I just keep everything the same. And he eventually comes out of it like several months later. So winter is always kind of a lonely time because he's asleep. Um, however, the baby, be, uh, the baby blue tongue skink is not going into brumation. She's only like five months or four months old right now. And most of these lizards don't go into brumation in their first year. So she's been a blast. Um, I should do a little introductory video on her. <laughs> I've just been really, really slowly acclimating her to my, um, my home, the, sounds of the room. Whenever I go home, I usually take her out and I feed her so that she gets used to me feeding her and holding her. And then I'll watch a TV show 
A, because I'm exhausted, and B, because the sounds of the TV kind of simulate how loud it's going to be in here. I put the volume up pretty loud, and um, skinks are actually quite sensitive to noise, I've found. So having the TV on and going like that is going to help her get used to the sound of people and kids and all the stuff that goes on in here. What kind of puffer is that you are bringing in? Um, so I have a red eye, red belly puffer. I think uh, Lortetai is the species name of it. And I've had him for a while. He's been in some of my older videos too. So it's the same puffer that I'm thinking of bringing in. And I would set up a whole nother tank. Like I would bring his entire setup from home, like that 10 gallon tank and put it on my desk because I still have room on there. But again, I'm, I'm kind of holding off, I think, just holding off a little bit. So. Let's see. Um. Uh, okay, looks like I'm all caught up. So, some may not get enough light, so KG, or KG Cichlids is saying some may not get enough light due to one side getting sun and the rest getting shadow. I think both light and a sunlight will work better, but that's what I would do. Plants will outcompete. That's true. So um, maybe, we'll see. The load in this tank is still pretty low. Um, maybe once I get, like there's more growth or something, I'll, I'll do a light, I, I don't know. We'll see. I am going to the San Francisco Aquarium Society mega auction on Friday night. Um, I want to pick up a large tank for the baby skink. So the skink is going to go back here. <clears throat> so the skink is going to go on that table. That entire table is hers. That's like a five foot long table. And um, I'm thinking like a 75 gallon for her is what's considered like adequate for a mature blue tongue skink. She's actually gonna get larger than Weldon. She's gonna be like a two foot monster. <laughs> um, so she needs a larger tank. But anyway, sorry, I lost my train of thought. I will be going to the San Francisco Aquarium Society meeting on Friday and looking for that tank. And maybe I'll look for a, an additional uh, grow light to go over this. Um, that would be nice to have a light going over the front part of this tank. Oh my gosh, is there no end to this stuff? Okay. Bettas are doing okay. They're just kind of on the back burner right now, I have to say. Um, my whole fish hobby has kind of moved in a different direction now because I'm teaching full time. To be honest, I get home and I am exhausted. Like, I always have something to do and I never have enough time to do it, <laughs> is, the, is the feeling I have. But that's okay. Um, hopefully after this first year, it'll get better. Like I'll be a better teacher and can be more efficient in the work that I do. And then um, I can kind of go back to the hobby that way. But for right now, the hobby is kind of moved into one of education for me. I think it's always had that slant, but now that I have kids in the classroom and stuff, it's kind of turned into how can I get kids to ask questions about it? You know, how can I get them interested in it? And that's kind of what it's turned into. I would love to have bettas in the classroom one day, like have, um, uh, the whole research experience I did this summer where I was studying how to create an authentic behavioral research experience for kids using bettas uh, into the classroom, that is something that I want to publish and get out there. And if I even have time in the spring, I might bring that in. But I really have stepped back from breeding for show and for genetics. Like every time I mention that I do, they think it's cool, which is like awesome. Like, um, or at least they think it's interesting. And that is always a way to start bringing up lots of different conversations around genetics and things like that. 
but my personal hobby has dwindled a little bit but I do imagine it or I do foresee it rather increasing again in the future because it's just too much fun not to you know and it's relaxing but I don't think I'll get back to it 100% or to the level that I want it to be until um, the summer this next summer I don't plan on doing any um, extent like long research experiences like I did I'm just gonna stay home and relax I think let's see so I stick them in the fridge and I put this away in Denver okay bye Katie okay Flynn I have a Jan I have a reptile question I found an old 12-12-12 terrarium in my garage, but I cleaned it up. What kind of lizards or newts could I keep in it? Gosh, you know, I'm not the best person to ask. <laughs> I know a ton about bearded dragons, but not a lot about other lizards, because, I mean, Weldon's the only lizard I've ever kept for myself. So I feel like I can only really comment on bearded dragons, and, and now maybe the blue-tongued skink, even though I haven't had her for very long. Um, a 12, 12, 12, that might work well for, yeah, I don't know, a small lizard? Yeah, sorry, I'm not the best one. I don't want to say something and have it be wrong. Like, I really hate that. <laughs> so we have, like, Ruru 2 saying maybe an anole. That's what I was thinking. They're really cute and small. So, okay, let's take a look at this tank now. There's, like masses and masses of Elodia in here and I didn't even put it all in <laughs> so some of this is going to go to um, another teacher down the hall we're sharing so we're definitely not like all of this isn't going to stay in this tank but wow it's like a mat in there and there's a lot of duckweed but that's okay so there's all the snails. I'm really happy with how it turned out. The snails look happy. There's all the, all the littering of like the leaflets from the Elodia. But it's starting to look more and more natural, which I love. And then um, the other teacher, once he sets up his tank, he'll be taking about half the Elodia and half the snails. So it won't be quite as crowded, but these guys needed a break after being shipped during a heat wave, so I don't mind having them in my tank for a while. Anyway, guys, I think that's it. Um, thank you guys for joining me in setting up my planted tank. Let's see. Oh, I should probably like look into this thing. Okay, thank you guys for joining me for uh, setting up my planted tank. And um, I got some more work to do, so I'm going to keep working on the earthworms and other kinds of stuff. But anyway, thanks guys for dropping in. I'll give you guys another update on the, on the tank uh, soon.